Well, let's go live to Paris now. The French culture minister and junior French interior minister are speaking. And the police force who took part in this operation with uh, uh, staff from the interior ministry who, uh, who have done a remarkable job. You, you must know that more than 20 personnel from the ministry, and I salute their bravery. And they have sacrificed their life and took risk with their life to safeguard, to, to safeguard the building and the edifice. And since this morning, we know that 15 minutes, 20 minutes later, they have managed in their mission. And now I thank them, and the culture minister will say some few words. I pay homage to all the firefighters and the personnel who were mobilized and in the operations of yesterday and today. Uh, the artifacts and, and since last night we have uh, managed to safeguard and protect and remove the artifacts to the uh, town hall in Paris and I would like to ask the mayor of Paris and also the firefighters and the architects so that they can make they can secure the tunic of Saint Louis with regard to the treasures they will put in a safe place um, either today or tomorrow but as soon as possible with regard to the paintings and the um, of Notre Dame the big ones they cannot be re retrieved until Friday morning but as far as I'm uh, concerned they're not damaged there is a little bit of smoke a degree of smoke then we will transfer them to a secure place in the Louvre Museum they will be protected preserved and restored. I would like to add that with regard to the artifacts, there is the rosettes of the north and south. They haven't uh, been damaged in a big way. With regard to the west rosette, if we can anticipate uh, to retrieve it as on Friday, to retrieve them, we will do it. But the priority uh, for security, and it's up to the firefighters to guide us to do this. The uh, chief architect in charge of Paris uh, buildings and uh, heritage buildings have mobilized uh, um, teams from the culture ministry to make sure, alongside the firefighters of Paris, like the state secretary has said, uh, there has to be some vigilance, especially with regard to the north part of the building, so, so that the belfry should sustain. There are three key holes. One was linked to the collapse of the spire. And, uh, and, last, uh, and last night, you know, the, uh, the north roof was damaged. With, the help of the Paris firefighters, we, uh, we are trying to find a way to preserve the part of the belfry in the south. We have met uh, these people. About 500 uh, firefighters were engaged, took part in the, uh, this operation. Uh, as long as the alert, the SOS was sounded. 500 uh, firefighters from the Paris, and there was, they were always supported from surrounding areas. I salute their um, courage and determination. Of course, they are tired, but they have fought the fight, uh, the fire with courage and determination. I insist they fought the fire internally and externally. Thank you very much. And there you have it, the latest news from both the interior and the culture ministers here in Paris. Having entered inside the Notre Dame Cathedral, which still stands proudly here in Paris today, damaged but still standing. 
From 8 o'clock this morning, they went in to view the damage. And there's some good news that the structure, we're told, is still sound. The paintings of Notre Dame, the magnificent paintings, they are also not damaged. There has been some smoke uh, that has affected them, but they do believe they will be able to take the paintings out and protect them until the day when they can return to this cathedral that so many have vowed to rebuild. The priority now, says the junior interior minister in the next 48 hours, is to secure this structure, to secure the roofs. You can see behind us some of the scaffolding and the renovation work is still there. The roof, because the fire began, that huge inferno that began yesterday as the sun was setting here in Paris, the roof is gone, but they still want to secure it before then the experts can go in to do a proper inventory of what is still left inside, what was damaged, what needs to be repaired. Both the interior and the culture ministers paid tribute to the determination and to the bravery of more than 500 firefighters who battled in dangerous conditions, in urgent conditions, and also the personnel of the interior ministry who were there to try to secure this magnificent cathedral long seen as the embodiment of Paris and now is on the minds of so many people around the world. Nearly nine centuries of Gothic history were destroyed, but not all is gone. The two, two square Gothic towers still stands. Some of the smaller spires still soar here on a gray and a grieving day in Paris. But the most, the biggest spire was toppled. Let's just look at the momentous events of the past 24 hours here in Paris with this report from Richard Lister. Roofless, smoke scarred, but still standing. There were times overnight when many feared this ancient cathedral would not survive the inferno. But those assessing the damage today are now confident the fire is fully out. The whole fire is out. Now we're investigating and a set of experts is analysing all the structures to establish what we do next to consolidate the building. It was a cauldron of fire, flames racing through the medieval roof, so dense with timber it was known as the forest. The scaffolding in place for renovation work was also at risk of collapse. It stayed up, but so much more was lost. When the central spire finally succumbed to the flames, it seemed to rip the heart from the building. The shock on the face of President Macron spoke for all those looking on. For fire crews, it was a nightmare race against this all-consuming inferno. The height of the cathedral made it almost impossible to get enough water where it was needed. Some two-thirds of the roof was eventually lost. Overnight, Parisians kept a vigil. The streets around Notre Dame filled with the sounds of mourning. There are hundreds of people who died to build the cathedrals, and in here is their memory too. It hurts to see that. It's sad that a monument like this burns. It's very sad. It's one of the great monuments of France. I studied history, and it was very important for me to come and see her, maybe for one last time before she was no longer there. Notre Dame has been at the heart of French national life for almost six centuries. It's where Joan of Arc was declared a saint and Napoleon became an emperor. Today, though, it's scorched and rubble-strewn. Most of its treasures were taken to safety, but there are years of restoration ahead. The European Council called on all EU countries to help with that process. But at stake here is something more than just material help. The burning of the Notre Dame Cathedral has again made us aware that we are bound by something more important and more profound than treaties. 
The French billionaire François-Henri Pinault has pledged 100 million euros for the restoration effort. The Prime Minister, Edouard Philippe, was meeting his cabinet today to draw up a reconstruction plan. He knows that France will be watching. Surveys of the building are already underway. It was initially suggested the fire may have been caused by building work at the cathedral. Questions remain about that, though, and about why a better plan for dealing with a fire on this scale was not in place. Richard Lister, BBC News.